fifth grade. Today I'm going to be reading Lunch Money Chapter 2. So remember that you need to be following along in the book and I will also be putting the page numbers up on the screen so you can um, figure out what page I am on. So we are going to go all the way to page 14. Looks like this and we're going to read Chapter 2 Quarters. So go ahead and follow along with me. Chapter 2, Quarters. It was near the end of his fifth grade year, around 11.30 one morning during silent reading. Greg felt hungry, so he started to think about his lunch. A ham and cheese sandwich, a bag of nacho cheese, Doritos, a bunch of red grapes, and an apple cherry juice box. His mom had made him a bag lunch, which was fine with Greg. Making a lunch was a lot cheaper than buying one, and Greg loved saving money whenever possible. Plus, home food was usually better than school food. And on the day he bought a bag lunch, his mom also gave him 50 cents to buy desserts, which was also fine with Greg. Sometimes he bought a treat and sometimes he held on to the money. On this particular day, he had been planning to spend both quarters on an ice cream sandwich. Then Greg remembered where his lunch was, at home on the kitchen counter. He did have a dollar of his own money in his wallet, and he had two quarters from his mom in his front pockets, but a whole school lunch cost two bucks. He needed two more quarters. So Greg had walked to the front of the classroom, waited until his teacher looked up from her book, and then said, Mrs. McCormick, I left my lunch at home. May I borrow 50 cents? Mrs. McCormick had not missed a teaching opportunity in over 20 years. So she shook her head and in a loud voice enough for the whole class to hear, she said, I'm sorry, but no, I will not lend you money. Do you know what would happen if I handed out 50 cents to all the boys and girls who forgot their lunches? I'd go broke. That's what. You need to learn to remember these things for yourself. Then, turning to the class, Mrs. McCormick had announced, Greg needs some lunch money. Can someone lend him 50 cents? Over half of the kids in the class raised a hand. Embarrassed, Greg had hurried over to Brian Lamont, and Brian handed him two quarters. Thanks, Greg said. Pay you back tomorrow? Ten minutes later, Greg was in the cafeteria line, shaking all four quarters around in his pockets. They made a nice clinking sound, and that had reminded Greg how much he likes quarters. Stack up four and you've got a dollar. Stack up 20 quarter and that's five dollars. Greg remembered one day when he had piled up all his quarters on his dresser, four stacks, and each had been over a foot tall. Stacking up quarters like that had always made Greg feel rich. So on that day in April of his fifth grade year, Greg had started looking around the cafeteria and everywhere he looked, he saw quarters. He saw kids trading quarters for ice cream sandwiches and cupcakes and cookies at the dessert table. He saw kids over at the school store trading quarters for neon pens and sparkly pencils and for little decorations like rubber sock balls and plastic butterflies to stick onto the ends of these new pencils. He saw Albert Hobart drop three quarters into a machine so he could have a cold can of juice with his lunch. Kids were buying extra food, fancy pens, and pencils, special drinks, and snacks. There were quarters all over the place, buckets of them. And then Greg remembered those hands that had been raised back in his classroom. All those kids who had a couple of quarters to lend him extra quarters. Excited, Greg had started making some calculations in his head. Another one of his talents. There were about 450 fourth, fifth, and sixth graders at Ashworth and Immediate School. If even half of those kids had two extra quarters to spend every day, then there had to be at least 400 quarters floating around the school. That was $100 a day, over $500 a week. Money, extra money, just jingling around in pockets and lunch bags. At that moment, Greg's view of school changed completely and forever. School had suddenly become the most interesting place on the planet because young Greg Kenton had decided that school would be an excellent place to make his fortune. And that is the end of chapter three.